Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation on multi-party computation with synchronous security and asynchronous responsiveness. My name is Chenda and this is joint work with Julian Loss, Wally Maurer, Tal Moran and Daniel Chudi. Let me start by recalling what MPC is about. In the problem of secure multi-party computation, there are n parties. Each party has a private input. They are connected via some communication network and want to jointly compute a function in such a way that uh, nothing about the inputs is revealed. And they basically want to achieve what is achieved or what can be achieved in an ideal setting with a trusted party even when some of the parties are corrupted. Perhaps the most widely considered model uh, in the MPC literature is the synchronous model. Here, protocols proceed in rounds. We assume that each party knows what the current round is, and in each round it reads the messages from the previous rounds, maybe does some local computation, and sends the messages for the current round. A, cru a crucial assumption is that for these protocols to work, we need that messages sent at round R are guaranteed to be, be delivered by round R plus one. And in reality, we can achieve this round structure assuming synchronized clocks and channels with a known delay upper bound uh, big delta. The idea is simple. We just start uh, round one at some time, some fixed time tau zero and then each round takes uh, delta clock ticks. The synchronous model comes handy, or we like the synchronous model, because uh, it, it allows us to achieve uh, very strong security guarantees. Um, usually, th uh, synchronous protocols can tolerate a very high corruption threshold. So for example, assuming uh, standard setup assumptions, uh, one can achieve the strongest type of security, full security, or, or also called uh, guaranteed output delivery, where parties are guaranteed to obtain the correct output for any adversary that can corrupt up to T parties, as long as T is smaller than N half. And one can even tolerate an arbitrary number of corruptions if one settles for a notion of security with a port, or even unanimous support and no fairness, meaning that every honest party gets the correct output or every honest party outputs bottom. But it is not fair in the sense that the adversary is allowed to learn the correct output. Moreover, in this kind of protocols, all inputs from honest parties are taken into account for the computation. So what is the downside? When we think about uh, running a synchronous protocol over the internet, where the actual delay is hard to predict, we have to set the round length uh, big delta uh, large enough to accommodate any possible delay in the network. This means that for a synchronous protocol to actually work, um, the big delta has to be set much larger than the typical network delay, uh, small delta. So the speed of synchronous protocols is proportional to the conservatively assumed uh, worst case delay. And in particular, this, this implies that they are slow when executed over the internet. So how can we uh, design fast protocols in reality in settings where uh, the delay is hard to predict? Well, one option is to use asynchronous protocols. In an asynchronous protocol, we do not need to know any upper bound delay. These protocols are message driven and intuitively one can think of an asynchronous protocol as a greedy protocol. The idea is that as soon as a party uh, gets enough messages to proceed, they proceed. On the upside, this uh, immediately implies that the speed of an asynchronous protocol is proportional to the actual network delay, small delta. But on the downside, 
it is well known that asynchronous protocols can only uh, tolerate up to t smaller than n third corruptions. This is optimal. And moreover, unavoidably, the computation um, can ignore the inputs of up to t possibly honest parties. And, and uh, intuitively, the reason is that one cannot distinguish between uh, a dishonest party not sending a message or an honest party that is very slow. In this paper, uh, we investigate the natural question of whether it is possible to um, leverage synchronous MPC protocols to also achieve this nice feature that asynchronous protocols have, namely to achieve uh, responsiveness, meaning that parties obtain the output at a time that is as fast as the network allows. So more concretely, we investigate if there is a protocol that simultaneously uh, is able to achieve uh, full security with responsiveness up to small t corruptions, so uh, similarly to an asynchronous protocol. And moreover, it should also achieve up to large t some form of extended security, which can be, uh, for example, uh, full security or unanimous support. And these are the guarantees that we would expect from a synchronous protocol. So for the case where extended security is uh, unanimous support, this is possible if and only if um, large, large t plus two times small t is smaller than n. And for the case where uh, full security is required as extended security, in addition, we naturally need that uh, large t is smaller than n half. The model that we consider is a model of UC functionalities. We borrow the synchronous clock introduced uh, by Katz, Maurer, Tuckman, and Zikas in 2013. And we model the actual network delay with a communication network that has a, a delay small delta, which is unknown to the honest parties. This implies that protocols cannot use small delta. However, we assume that parties know a conservatively uh, a conservative upper bound uh, big delta, which can be thought of as a delay or a number that is much larger than, than the actual network delay small delta. And about the adversary, we assume a threshold adversary which can corrupt up to F parties in an arbitrary manner and can also schedule the messages arbitrarily but within the small delta clock ticks. And one can ask in this model, how can we preserve the same security guarantees as in synchronous protocols and also achieve some level of responsiveness? And maybe a naive attempt would be to try and execute a synchronous protocol with a greedy approach. And the idea is that parties proceed to the next round as soon as they get messages from all parties. And more concretely, each party uh, basically appends to each message uh, its round number. And as soon as PA receives all messages from round R, it doesn't wait. It directly sends uh, the messages for round R plus one and notifies every party I am done with round R. And as soon as a party receives I am done from every party, they continue with round R plus one. And one can see that the protocol achieves uh, security in the sense that when parties output, they output the correct value and also privacy is preserved. And moreover, if all parties are honest, the protocol is responsive. It outputs as fast as the network allows. However, because PI doesn't know who is corrupted and who is uh, honest, it has to wait for all parties. And this implies that a single corrupted party 
can make the protocol not terminate simply by not sending its messages. And as a consequence, one cannot hope to obtain any level of responsiveness so far. So let me explain the security guarantees that our protocol achieves in more detail. If there are up to small t corruptions, parties obtain all the security guarantees that one would expect from an asynchronous protocol. This means that all parties obtain a correct output value uh, y async, which is guaranteed to take into account the inputs from n minus t parties. That is, it achieves uh, what we call full security with responsiveness up to t corruptions. And as a remark, note that this output, in contrast to a synchronous protocol, may ignore the inputs of up to t honest parties, but uh, it is easy to see that this is unavoidable if one wants this output uh, to be fast. On the other hand, if there are between small t and large t uh, corruptions, then parties still benefit from having extended security meaning that uh, they obtain a correct output in the case of full security, or they may all obtain bottom in the case of security with unanimous support. Our security guarantees are actually a bit more concrete in the sense that uh, parties may all obtain an asynchronous output that takes into account n minus t inputs, or they may also, on the other hand, obtain a synchronous output where all inputs are taken into account. But parties are able to recognize whether um, they obtain the asynchronous output or the synchronous one. So how do we obtain such guarantees? So for that, the idea is that uh, we design a compiler that takes two protocols. One synchronous protocol with extended security that is secure up to large T corruptions and an asynchronous protocol which is secure up to small T corruptions. And, and the hope is that the compiled protocol achieves the security guarantees uh, from both protocols. However, the compiler doesn't really work like this, and intuitively the problem is that the asynchronous protocol might in principle um, lose all security guarantees when more than small t corruptions happen, so it is hard to make use of the asynchronous component. Therefore, uh, the idea would be to, instead of taking an asynchronous protocol with security up to t small uh, small t corruptions, uh, it also achieves some uh, level of security even if there are large t corruptions, meaning that um, it actually achieves all the security guarantees in the sense that correctness and privacy is maintained, but parties may not be able to obtain output in the protocol. And this uh, two threshold asynchronous MPC protocol uh, can be obtained by modifying existing protocols. And in our paper, uh, we modify the protocol uh, by Cohen, uh, which is based on homomorphic encryption, but one can also modify other protocols to achieve this two threshold property. So in the rest of the talk, I will focus on the design of the compiler rather than the asynchronous uh, protocol with uh, two thresholds. Okay, so what is the idea of the compiler? The idea is uh, actually very simple. We first optimistically run the asynchronous protocol. Then if there are up to small t corruptions, then we are fine and parties obtain an asynchronous output as fast as the network allows. However, if the, there are more than small t corruptions, it could be that the protocol doesn't terminate. 
So we follow the approach uh, introduced by PASS. Our compiler has an asynchronous phase and a synchronous phase separated by the timeout. Uh, the asynchronous phase has this uh, bulb which is initially off. And the bulb turns on as soon as the asynchronous phase gives output. And if the bulb is on, the synchronous phase also outputs Y async. On the other hand, if at the end of the asynchronous phase the bulb is off, the synchronous phase can either output Y async or Y sync, uh, but only one of those, not both. So how does the asynchronous phase look like? So the asynchronous phase has two sub-protocols. And the idea is that first, uh, parties run an asynchronous protocol, which um, doesn't really um, output the, the correct thing. It outputs an encrypted version of the correct output Y async. And this I denote uh, Y async with the square brackets. And for that, uh, parties use a threshold encryption scheme as a setup. And to decrypt that output, uh, we set the threshold to be, say, n minus t. Then the decrypt box has a task to decrypt this ciphertext. And if it succeeds, then the bulb turns on. Now let's go to the synchronous phase. This phase has also two boxes. Um, there is the box uh, check and the synchronous protocol. The task of the box check is to check whether the bulb is on or off. If it is on, then it must output Y async, which should be the same output as the one that, that was output in the asynchronous phase. And if the bulb is off, then check can output either Y async or bottom, but only one. And if bottom is output, then the synchronous protocol is executed and the synchronous phase outputs uh, Y sync. So this is uh, the complete picture. How does the decrypt box work? The idea is quite simple. So when a party PI receives uh, the ciphertext containing Y async, it just signs it and sends the signature to every other party. And once a party collected N minus T signatures on the same ciphertext, it sends the decryption share. Um, and once a party gets N minus T uh, decryption shares, it can reconstruct the output. And by a standard uh, quorum argument, if there are less than N, min N minus two times small t corruptions, then there cannot be two lists uh, for different ciphertexts. And uh, if the asynchronous protocol went right, this is the correct ciphertext. So here is the condition. Um, here is where the condition large t plus two times small t smaller than n is needed. In the check protocol, parties synchronously broadcast a list of n minus t signatures if they uh, manage to form any such list at step two of the protocol decrypt. And then if a list uh, is received, then everyone sends um, decryption shares and recovers the output y async. And otherwise check outputs bottom and the synchronous protocol is executed. Now, if the number of corruptions is smaller than n minus two times small t, and the bulb is on, meaning that a party obtained an output, then the party collected n minus t shares. This implies that there exists an honest party that sent his decryption share. So this honest party got a list of n minus t signatures on a ciphertext C. And in the check phase, 
this honest party will send this list, implying that all honest parties will send the decryption shares and reconstruct Y async, which is what we wanted. For the impossibility proof, we are going to show that a protocol that achieves uh, full security with responsiveness up to small t corruptions and unanimous support up to large t corruptions is not possible if large t plus two times uh, small t is larger or equal than n. And the proof is similar to the proof that asynchronous MPC or consensus is impossible above and third corruptions. So without loss of generality, assume that uh, large t plus two times uh, small t is equal to n, and we consider the majority function, and we divide the parties into two sets of size uh, small t and a set at the bottom of size large t. So in the first scenario, the left and the bottom sets have input uh, zero, and the right set in red is corrupted and crashes at the beginning of the protocol execution. Since the majority uh, is zero, the majority of inputs is zero, um, and the protocol achieves full security even when small t corruptions are there, then uh, all honest parties output zero. And furthermore, um, in, in this scenario, the adversary schedules the messages between the two honest sets very fast, according to, say, some delay uh, delta prime, uh, which is much, much, much smaller than delta. Um, so the time at which the party's output is proportional to uh, delta prime. And of course, symmetrically, we can argue that if the right and the bottom sets have input one and the adversary schedules messages uh, very fast between these two sets, then the honest part is output one, uh, which is the majority value, and at a time proportional to delta prime as well. Finally, if the adversary corrupts uh, large uh, T parties, the bottom set, uh, then it can play at the same time the first execution with input uh, zero towards the left set of small T parties, and also the third execution with input one towards the right set. Then if the adversary delays uh, the messages between the two small sets by delta, effectively since uh, delta prime is much smaller than delta, the left set will output at a time proportional to delta prime and will output before getting any message from the right set. This means that the left set behaves as in the first scenario and outputs zero, whereas the right set behaves as in the third scenario and outputs one. This means that they both output uh, different values, contradicting the fact that in the protocol, all parties output uh, the same, possibly bottom value. This impossibility was for the case of uh, unanimous support as extended security. And of course, if uh, full security is required as extended security, then we also need that uh, large t is smaller than n half but uh, this we already knew from Cliff's uh, classical impossibility result. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, I put here the, the full version of the paper.